Hello, everybody. Uh, Robert J. Morris here. Um, in our ever-growing uh, fight with uh, or against Big Pharma here, just wanted to uh, point out a couple of things that we have to look at, and the more of us doing this, the better. Um, there are basically two humongous hurdles that we have to look at when it comes to uh, going after big pharma and minimizing the damage done to people in, in, in a wide range of ways. Now, first and foremost, there's a lot of smoke screens and there's a lot of things put in place that will make this rather difficult. Um, I'm going to give you two examples right now, and these are things that need to be looked at. One is organizational committees or, or groups or organizations given power to regulate or allow, a.k.a. approve uh, either devices or medications or, or the sort. The other thing to look at are legislations that get passed or 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 get put on the table uh, while we're distracted thinking about other things. Uh, first off, let's go uh, to the UK. Um, I'm, uh, I, I recently, uh, I'm not, I don't live in the UK, but uh, I recently got privy to a, a group called Change.org, <clears throat> and they have in here uh, links to a few different articles regarding the MHRA and. <clears throat> That's the uh, <clears throat> the uh, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, and they're set in place to uh, well, they're supposed to be a watchdog, really, is what they're supposed to be. However, there's a lot of evidence stating that uh, they're exactly the opposite. That what they're doing is uh, basically sitting as uh, as gatekeepers for uh for big pharma to to push products out that aren't necessarily properly tested or properly approved here let me uh, digress a little bit on that <clears throat> um here's a here's a part of this article which is on the lancet it's a collection of journals and such um i'm i'm assuming this is a neutral uh, objective look uh there's a gentleman by the name of uh, uh, Mr. Toft. Uh, I guess he was uh, making a presentation where he assessed the MHRA's uh, effectiveness or their efficacy. But anyway, uh, check this out. Uh, I just kind of skipped a bunch of the BS here and went straight for the uh, neck here. Uh, how is a medical device regulated in the UK? The MHRA is the competent authority, quote unquote, for device safety and reports directly to the Secretary of State. However, the assessment of devices is performed not by the MHRA, but by around 70 notified bodies across Europe, including the UK. Their task is to determine the safety and effect effectiveness of a device and to issue a Certificate of Conformity, a CE mark. In other words, device regulation in the UK is outsourced to third-party organizations that the CSD knows to be a variable quality and which may be operating to different standards. The MHRA periodically audits notified bodies but not, does not itself, unlike for medicines, scrutinize safety and effectiveness data. In the UK, devices reach patients without the reassurance of adequate clinical trials to demonstrate their safety and efficacy, quote unquote. The operating principle at the MHRA seems to be do nothing until something goes wrong. The MHRA recognizes that it is a failing in its duties of care to the public. In the July 7th meeting, the CSD admitted that we need to be more specific about skills, expertise, and length of time involved in that particular technology for any given notified body. There needed to be greater central oversight of NB designation and monitoring. The CSD also noted that the manufacturers were failing to provide sufficient information about devices to patients. Overall, the safety of medical devices is a low priority for the MHRA with serious consequences for patient safety. Um, and apparently it says here, the MHRA's mission is to enhance 
and safeguard the health of the public by ensuring that medicines and medical devices work and are acceptably safe. The MHRA is, by its own admission, unable to fulfill this mission. Now, look, I'm going to leave you guys links for this. <clears throat> um, and there's also a UK petition. So if you're in the UK, by all means, even if you're not, go ahead and sign it. I don't know what could hurt. But anyhow, there's a, a bunch of other uh, links here regarding the MHRA. And like I said, this is just going to be a quick video. This is one example. These supposedly uh, authoritative bodies get put in place all the time. We need to expose them, um, the good ones and the bad ones. I'm sure there's good organizations out there um, that do have some oversight, that do do good things. Who knows? But we got to find them and, and identify them, first and foremost. All right. And now uh, going into the second category is legislation. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this. Um, recently, I believe it was uh, July 17th, I think is the date. Uh, we can go and confirm that slowly. Oh, wait, it was July 7th, I guess, that the article was written up. Okay. Anyway, it goes on to say, uh, this is in the U.S., uh, the 21st Century Cures Act is going through the U.S. Congress right now, and it will likely pass into law unless some opposition materializes. And it passed through the House of Representatives Energy and Commerce Committee with a vote of 51 to 0. The act is a giveaway to the pharmaceutical industry, removing many of the safety mechanisms in place that are supposed to keep the public protected from unsafe drugs and medical devices. The 21st Century Cures Act allows drugs to be rushed to the market, removes Phase 3 testing as a requirement for drug approval, bases drug approval on biomarkers rather than actual health outcomes, and encourages the production of new antibiotics at a time when microbiome destruction is increasingly being linked to chronic diseases. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, yeah, I do have a bit of a cold coming on here. Probably my smoker's cough coming on. Uh, right. What you have here, rushing drugs to market, um, a New York Times piece, don't weaken the FDA's drug approval process, notes that the 21st Century Cures Act could substantially lower the standards for approval of many medical products, potentially placing patients at unnecessary risk of injury or death. The reason why I'm bringing this up at the same time as the UK uh, bit with the MHRA is because, you know, every country has its bits of legislation, they have their watchdogs or as you know as they usually turn out being gatekeepers for big pharma in one way shape or form i'm actually currently looking for a canadian equivalent i'm sure it's there i'm just uh i'm just in a rush to get this out because we have to start uh looking at these organizations where we live at home and abroad as well and it's not just i said organizations but it's legislations and uh a lot of these events that take place in the news are meant to distract us so that these things can just get voted on and passed under our noses um but look the end of evidence-based medicine modern medicine is supposed to be evidence-based medicine backed up by replicatable or replicable placebo controlled scientific experiments that show that a drug or medicine medical device effectively treats a disease or a symptom that it is purported to treat this standard of evidence will no longer exist if the 21st century cures act passes into law the act will allow drug approval to be based on biomarkers and surrogate measures rather than health outcomes. This has been disastrous in the past, and it will be even more disastrous in the future. For example, we're now seeing that statins do well at reducing cholesterol, but despite improving that biomarker, they don't improve health outcomes for large portions of the population, notably the female portion of the population. All right. So without getting into that, you can pretty much understand where that's going. Um, yeah, you know, instead of uh, testing the actual health outcomes, they're looking at biomarkers. And this is a good point, by the way, because guess what's not seen as a biomarker in medicine? Formally. Form formally. <laughs> Nagalase is not seen as a biomarker in standard medicine like it's just not been incorporated as a biomarker so if it's if it's biomarker driven then of course 
they're not going to recognize that one if you can see the connection there anyway i just kind of noticed that now here's another big one the loss of informed consent this is a big one Informed consent by patients in drug trials has traditionally been sacrosanct with exceptions made only when consent is impossible to obtain or contrary to a patient's best interests. But another clause in the proposed law adds a new kind of exception. Studies in which the proposed clinical testing poses no more than minimal, minimal risk, a major departure from current human subject protections. It is not clear who gets to determine whether a given trial of a new drug poses minimal risk. And then... There's an art. There's part of the article deals with uh, dangerous new antibiotics. Um, there's uh, like antibiotic antibiotic resistance and what have you. So of course, you know, they uh, they go on to say a bunch of stuff here. Um, the solution to antibiotic resistance is prudent use of available antibiotics and finding sustainable ways to reduce harm caused by pathogenic bacteria perhaps by using healthy bacteria to keep the unhealthy bacteria in check, not doubling down on the kill-all bacteria tactic that led us to the problem of antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections in the first place. Uh, bacteria continues to adapt, yada, 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 yada. A healthy and balanced microbiome, uh, the ecological community of commensal, symbiotic, and pathogenetic microorganisms that literally share our body space is crucial for all areas of health, and a disturbed microbiome has been linked to all of the diseases of modernity, modernity <laughs> including mental health disorders, neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's disease, <clears throat> mysterious diseases like fibromyalgia, autism, etc. Hmm, where have we heard these before? Guys, think about this. And while there is acknowledgement of the role that a healthy microbiome plays in these diseases, researchers and journalists alike have been loath to acknowledge the role antibiotics have played in contributing to these diseases of modernity. Um, I'm not even going to continue reading. Um, I'm going to give you guys a link to this uh, page and you guys can check it out. But... <clears throat> Given the current uh, research that we're doing uh, into Nagalase, the one thing that's not seen as a biomarker, they seem to be pushing for a bill that will basically allow Big Pharma to just push any drug they want on you in this little window that they're trying to like creep up on you with. So guys, um, I'm going to end the video here. Just wanted to point this out to you. The two categories, legislation and organizations, we got to start identifying them and we got to start fighting them and fight them now. Like this bill, I don't even know how far along it is, but you guys in the U.S., start calling your statesmen. Start getting, uh, like, start lighting up the, the, the horns with this. And uh, you guys in the U.K., uh, provide links for the petition for the MHRA. Guys, sign it. Let's start. Let's start nailing these sons of bitches like now because... Uh, well, yesterday's already too late. Well, we can do what we can now. All right, guys. I just want to say uh, take care of yourselves and, for God's sake, take care of each other. And uh, love you all. Peace.